So since um, they didn't actually give a theme song for um, AW All In this year, I went back to the original All In hey. and found the theme music for that. And that's um, Downstate All In, same band that does Cody's music, um, does the song All In. So I figured, why not break that out for this? For all oh, time. Yeah, a bit yeah. of nostalgia. You know, I was just looking over the original card and I completely forgot Rey Mysterio was involved. In the main event! <laughs> In the main event! <laughs> How did I not remember that? <laughs> I, isn't, it like, isn't it like the Golden Elite versus like the um versus like um it was it was like the Bucks and Kota Bushi against like um Bendito, Rey Mysterio, and um I forget the, who the last person was, but like that was, was it was it Penta? Oh no, Penta was against Kenny on that. Okay. Penta was against, Penta was against Kenny. Oh it was Ray Phoenix. It was Ray Phoenix. That was it. Doesn't it, was, it feel like it was about twenty years ago? That was the main event of original of all it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't even remember Rey Mysterio being on that show. Yeah, he, yeah. That, I remember because they, the whole crowd went nuts when it was Coda versus Rey in the ring for the first time ever. Like I remember, like that's insane. What do you think of that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, and now he's a bad father. <laughs> <laughs> and now his son went to jail and everything. He's like one of the best <laughs> guy television right now. <laughs> you know what? I don't watch much WWE, but I don't care. I still stand dirty dumb. <laughs> And Rhea. Rhea. <laughs> and mommy. Of course, and of mommy. Mommy and <laughs> Whenever they're on the screen, there should just be like a caption underneath me that just says bisexuality intensifies. Yeah, that the whole <laughs> faction. It's just like a it's like a queer polycule. Exactly. But there is that, that one video of Rhea and Dom where she's like like uh, the hand thing. The hand thing. I'm just like <laughs> Let's just say my ovaries exploded. Let's just say that. <laughs> but I thought about that of that, that video. It came up the day after um, Rhea got engaged. Which I love. <laughs> <laughs> she knows she what knows, she's that's, doing. That storyline, I, I don't believe that part. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, like Rhea always says, Mama's on top. Yeah. Mommy. Mommy's on top. <laughs> well, she's on top, all right. <laughs> well, let's get to all in. All right. Um, so as of now, this number could go up. I just sort of actually, this sort of something. Apparently, if you count U.S. sales, apparently we're over ninety thousand tickets. According to something I just saw online a minute ago, but I'm not sure how accurate that is. If you count U.S. sales, Wait, not, what do you mean U.S. sales? The people bought tickets in the U.S. that are flying out and they didn't count them in the original number. <laughs> really? That's weird. What, what? Why would they not count them? What the hell? But for something literally a minute ago, I'm not even sure where I saw it. I can't even like vouch for it. Like it just for pop up, and I was looking for something else. So, okay, might be more than this, but as of when they talk, as of Wednesday, last Wednesday show, it was at 80,846, which is more than WrestleMania 32, the biggest show in um, wrestling history that wasn't papered like a couple of Korea shows. I don't count this, they're not counting the Korea. How, so, how many, how many seats does the uh, stadium have? 90,000, I think. So like, it's, okay. it's around that. It's it's under a hundred thousand, but it's over ninety. Okay. It's, it's yeah. like in in between the two. We're gonna have a fucking crazy crowd on Sunday. Yeah, that's all I know. <laughs> but it is the biggest paid attendance in wrestling history, and they worded that way on purpose because of the fact that there's a couple of Korea shows that apparently have like a hundred thousand in WCW history, but they don't count those because they weren't paid. So that's a difficult one for me because <laughs> obviously this is in my country, so I'm so happy. Yeah, it's great. But is it fair to discount the Korean shows, really? I don't know. Yeah. If you look at these, they still like impressive. forced against their will to go. <laughs> Apparently, they were very confused. A lot of people in the crowd were like, what the hell is this? Based on the screen <laughs> that I watched, it, they, people did not know what the hell was going on. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think they've ever seen people before, you know. <laughs> so it, I'd be confused, too. It's turning out to be a very interesting show. <laughs> All right, um, so let's get into the card. We're not going to talk about the um, the zero one match, the um, zero one match until later because they have to do with the main event. So we'll get to the, the, we'll get to that. Um, let's get to the actual main show so far. So we have a CDM Stampede match. Apparently, this match is already changed. We're, okay, so before I begin, we are doing this on Wednesday afternoon. Obviously, the show airs on fr post on Friday, so anything that's announced on Dynamite will not be a part of this. Um, because I were feeling there's going to be a couple of announcements. And we, by the way, we I'm saying that. We already have nine matches announced. <laughs> and you know there's going to be more. You know there will oh, be more. Yeah. So, 
AW pay-per-views are already about goddamn five hours long, and this is the biggest one ever. They're probably going to do another hour. <laughs> I'm so I mean, and John, no, no offense, because you're watching obviously in prime time for you. For us, it's on for the for us in Central Time Zone. It starts at like noon, and I'm loving the fact that this if this show goes like eight hours. It'll then go in the prime time for us, and we can go watch like worse cooks. Yeah, <laughs> it'll mean nothing to you. This is, I can't even say now you know how I feel because you've still got it great. It's still in the middle of the day. <laughs> not fair. Then again, we all in this country, uh, except for like nurses and doctors and things, we all have Monday off, not because of AEW. We just, it's a, it's a national holiday on Monday. So it's, I don't care. This can go at any time. No. I, I'm not bothered. What is the holiday? I heard that on a different podcast. What's the holiday? Uh, well, it's not over here. We don't necessarily have specific ones. We sometimes do. It's just called a bank holiday. Basically, the government just decide like so many times a year. What is it like eight times a year? Like, oh, by the way, you get a Monday off. And it's called that because the banks are closed. And it's so, because of AW. You're welcome. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Wonderful. Wow. Let's go. The stadium stampede. So this is the match that's currently on board. Um, first of all, Ray Phoenix has been pulled from the show because of a visa issue. So he will not be here. Um, that's number oh, one. Oh, no. We'll get pulled. I got announced late on Tuesday. So that's number we'll one. We'll get pulled. Ray Phoenix, he will not be on this. Okay. That well, is a real shame. I was looking forward to that. But, I, yeah. you know, I, I've worked in the visa department before. I know how in the blink of an eye there can be a problem. They could have been planning this and had everything submitted, and then at the last second, it's like, oh, by the way, no, you've screwed up. <laughs> Oops. So, okay, well, here's the match that is announced as of now. Um, it is Eddie Kingston, um, AW United Champion Orange Cassidy. It is the best friends Chuck Taylor and Temporetta, Pento Zero and Zero Mano, and then over on, on the other team is Blackpool Combat Club, John John Moxley, the Ring of Honor World Champion Claudio Castagnoli, and Will Yuta, and three wrestlers to be named later. I have zero clue who these three wrestlers are going to be. Uh, start because you're hand raising. Um, I read someplace and don't quote me on this, but supposedly, remember uh, two guys that were aligned with K Eddie Kingston a while back. The Tanner and Ortiz. I heard they weren't cleared yet. Supposedly, I heard that basically. I heard it wasn't cleared yet. Okay. Because I heard that they had they were supposed to go to a previous. But but why would they go against Eddie? Because baby, they can do the you didn't write, you didn't call, you didn't send me anything, you didn't care. That's not believable, Eddie. Though that's not believable, like at all. <laughs> like I, I personally can see like Shona Umino being a part of this. Um, maybe bringing um, maybe no, Ishii. And like uh, maybe Lance Archer because he's not doing anything right now. <laughs> he's not doing anything. So maybe mm -hmm. the team is throwing together. That's the only people I can really think of at the top of my head, John. Or are we going to get some like some British wrestlers maybe thrown in there? I can't think who it would be though. This is the thing because a lot of a lot of wrestlers from here end up on AEW anyway. So uh... how about the Vaughn villains? I heard they're back together. I did... Apparently they are. Yeah. They're, they're doing a show um in I, I want to say in Seahawk in like in like New York. Um next oh. week so they wouldn't be available. <laughs> I I would love it if there were some some staples of the British indie wrestling scene who showed up, but I can't imagine I mean it that would, would be make big sense. Enough. Yeah, but would would it be important enough to keep it a surprise? Like, oh my god, this person really you only know if you watch like ICW or something. You know? <laughs> Eyes because they haven't announced it yet on Dynamite that we haven't seen yet. That's the thing. That's the problem. Like it, it, it might just be something like Robert Brookside for all we know, and like it's something That'd be cool. Like, but we don't know because they haven't announced it yet. It's as simple as that. I mean, um, I'm, I'm like, very surprised there's no. Um, I'm not saying it's going to be him because it wouldn't be that shocking. I'm surprised there's no Kip Sabian on this. Um, Good question. I don't know. Maybe he's hurt again. I don't know. Maybe he's hiding with a box in his head again. I don't know. <laughs> I, uh, I think he's all right. I think he's healthy. Like he's on Ring of Honor and nobody's watching that. I have no idea. <laughs> give him a give him a match. Come on, it's the UK. I keep I seeing people say, "Why don't they get pay?" Uh, I was gonna say Paige. Why don't they get uh, Soraya's brother to have a match? It's like, well, because oh, there you go. What do you mean? But even over here, nobody really knows him. <laughs> so yeah. Oops. 
<laughs> Devon and Bob Bubba Ray. All right. Well, let's actually let's actually now figure out who's winning this thing. Um, honey, you haven't said much. What are your thoughts on who's winning this idiom champion match? Hmm. I feel like at this point, Blackpool Combat Club needs it a little more only because I feel like their momentum has kind of been on the line. Yeah, it's just kind of, it's just not there. Um, but honestly, I, I do feel like it's going to be up to who these mystery people are. True. That's a really good point. So, are you going with um, Blackpool for now? Tentatively? Fair enough. Um, John, what do you think? Exactly the same. It depends on who these mystery people are. They'll be the deciders. But going off what we know, I would say Blackpool Combat Club. I mean, it, it helps them reestablish themselves after their loss to the elite and things like that. So, yeah. Yeah. BCC. And, I mean, they're, they're facing essentially glorified jobbers. I hate to say it. Like, I just... The fix in and Sharon Cassidy, who's like the hottest person on the company right now when it comes to win. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but he's not defending his belt. This is the exactly. thing. Exactly. Very, very true. I feel like Orange Cassidy by himself is one entity, but then when you include him with uh, Chuck and Trent, I think that kind of gives him a whole different identity. True. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. Yeah, I'm Blackpool Combo. I think they're going to win this thing too. Sal, what do you think? Um, just to be different, I'm going to say the opposite. I'm saying that they're going to lose, and maybe we can get some rumblings of a breakup because they don't need to be together anymore. Oh, how dare you? How dare you? You're asking that? Um, I'm going to go along the same lines as Sal is, is basically because after, since Daniel is gone, he was like the heart of the Blackpool Combat Club, and now without Daniel, there's like no direction. Everyone's kind of going like Ryan. their own kind of way, and they may bump into each other, but there's no direction. I mean, if you really want to give them a big push and m maybe put them in like contention for the trio's title, oh. this may be the way to do it. But I don't see that happening. All right, I might think I just thought of something for the person to replace Ray Phoenix, Danhausen. Oh yeah. <laughs> Like, did he break his leg? I thought he was cl cleared. I, I, I think honest, he might be. But I saw him, and when I when I saw pictures of him recently, he still had a cast on his leg. Okay, all right. <laughs> so, oh no! Like he broke his leg. I know, like he broke his leg earlier in the year when I threw him his to E two. He was he had a cast on. Okay. You know, it was also in April, but like I'll do a little investigative research. There you go. Mm -hmm. Let's move on. Also, you're talking about. Uh, Brian, like he's dead. <laughs> like he'll never return again. Or, like Brian he, is no longer with us. It is weird that he doesn't, even though he's injured. Like, why doesn't he just come out with the group? Um, that's a good question. Maybe well, depend what, what I remember the injury was really bad. So maybe he's just taking some time to rest. And right. Maybe I heard that uh Bree is pregnant again. That I did not hear. Oh. If she is, that's interesting. Okay. And John that's Cena's the father? Here, oh, to, no. to, quote, to quote one Dan Housen on X, hello, I am injured. I will not be at Wembley. Go enjoy the wrestlers who are not injured that are at the show that have worked very hard to help make this happen. I am not at Wembley. I am not at Wembley. I am not at Wembley. I am that means gonna he's going to be, be there. there. <laughs> that means there you go. I am injured. Yay, Yay he's one of the people. That's confirmed. <laughs> Oh, well, this is a weird thing with AEW. The only time they have gone against it was last time with Danhausen, right? When someone's injured, they just disappear. It's like you can still use them in stories. They can still come out and do stuff. That's true. I mean, you're absolutely right. <laughs> so, all right, let's move on. We have um, a championship that's not even real, but it's the next match. It's the <laughs> but I'm quote. Ex excuse me while I roll my eyes. Yes, it yeah. is. Real world champion. By the way, so I just want to clarify this. If you ask Ian Riccoboni, Kevin Kelly, or Nigel McGuinness, the commentary yeah. on on um, on um collision, this is not a real championship at all. If you ask them, if you ask the ring announcers, this is a real title. <laughs> a real title. Ever defending, what, else, 
Well, that's how the FTW title started out. It was supposed to just be like a stupid little thing, and then they actually decided, hey, we're going to start defending the title. What's funny about that is that it's still technically not under like AEW banner, but it's been in and Jack Perry has the belt now. Like it's so stupid. It's so no, weird. but that that's why I like it, and that's why that works. Whereas this is just like if it do I'm not saying this is the truth, but it feels from the outside perspective like it is just that they're, they're doing it to just keep CM Punk happy. Oh, here you go, you've got a belt. It's CM Punk versus <laughs> CM Punk versus Samoa Joe. For the I have zero problem with this match. I actually love this matchup. I love yeah. the tournament. I love the fact we're doing it again. I have no problem with the match. Why is he defending a championship? It's not even real. <laughs> like, I, don't, I don't even care. They're just carrying the belt around. I don't even care about that. Like, it's literally to a Pung MJF match, finally. I understand that completely. But why do they have to defend it? <laughs> that is the problem I have to pop with here. <laughs> again, I don't mind the defense of it, but what you, what's weird is this is a heel move. A heel goes around saying, I'm the champion, when you're not the champion. But they're not presenting him as a heel. Samoa <laughs> Joe's the heel. <laughs> it's bizarre. Yeah, Christian, exactly. <laughs> he's not the champion. He's saying he's the champion. See, it's a heel thing. Actually, if you're asking what city you're in, it depends on the heel or not. <laughs> and then you get people online I've seen saying, oh, yeah, but he never lost it. It's like, he was stripped of it. That counts. That's the same thing as losing it. <laughs> thing is hurt. And he had it like the first, like the first time, where they did an interim championship thing, and then they did a unification match. That all at least makes sense. It's very, it's very something AEW does. But he, yeah. was, like you think, John, you just said he was stripped of it because he was suspended. Yeah. <laughs> Which again think... would be great if he was acting as a heel and like, no, 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 I am the champion. You know. <laughs> I think this should be a title for title match. Well, the real world movie. championship belt against the ROH television championship I think belt. This be a ring of honor championship match. <laughs> Make it a title match, and actually Joe might actually win. Because the way this is going, there's no way Joe can win this match. No, no way. There's zero chance. They're they're not going to let Punk look bad. That's the whole thing. Yeah, um, so he does a well enough job of that on his own. He doesn't. Aim <laughs> it's it's Punk's a weird thing because like. And, and like, like John said, he's a heel. In the day, he is a heel. And if he was a heel, everyone else but Chicago, I'd understand it. Because again, it worked for MJF, where he was a heel, <laughs> but on Staten Island or Long Island. Like I understood that. That made sense to me. But like Punk is somehow a babyface. I have no idea. And I like Punk. Don't get me wrong. I like the guy, but I don't like him here. I don't understand why he's a babyface at all. I don't understand. No. I don't get it. I don't get it. Like, and I'm someone. I, I am sitting in front of I bought the t shirt on the on when he came to AW. I bought that t shirt day one. I've got it behind me right now. I have it upstairs. But I'm just sick of it now. I'm sick of the whole thing. Just just I, I don't care. <laughs> so I would just all just agree that Punk's winning this match. Let's just be honest here. Yeah, yeah. Around. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it, 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 will this be a potential squash match? No, no, it's gonna be a really good match. I think it's gonna be a hell of a match. There's gonna be their match. I think they're matching the tournament. Was great. It was just too short because of the tournament match. I think this match can go wild and have a lot of fun with it. They have great chemistry. Like I have zero problem with that. No, like, I would want Samoa Joe to win this match so bad. But he won't. <laughs> but the powers that be are, aren't going to let it happen because they don't want to piss off Warner Brothers Discovery or whatever. I, I think it's the news Warner Brothers Discovery. I think it's all punk. I think it's all punk. Honestly, he's got that just... much creative control. He's kicking people out of the building. <laughs> even if he doesn't, I thought, know, I thought he was he just being know. a regular douchebag. But you know, <laughs> for Daniel, but, he, but that's not to show up because he does, Punk doesn't like it. Take the head of creative. <laughs> that's crazy. That is crazy. But even if well, he doesn't do have that kind with, of power, um, like it doesn't make sense story wise, right? You wouldn't. Why would he lose now? And yeah, is. Punk a good wrestler? Yes. Is he the best in the world? Absolutely not. Should he have nearly as much power as he's been given? No. And that is Tony Khan's fault because Tony doesn't like to put his foot down and he wants to make everyone happy. So instead of pissing off all the parties involved, he let Punk take his little ball over to Collision and do what he wants. This is literally Tony Khan creating a monster and now all of us have to deal with it. Agree. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah you you are correct. Because if Tony would have had 
some cojones, he would have basically told Punk, Bless you. Give me, give me that belt. It's not recognized. You can't carry it. Again, this is what you're going to do. I actually have no problem. Again, I think the storyline of him having the belt is not a bad storyline whatsoever. Especially if it's leading to All Out and having CM Punk versus MJF All Out or MJF or Adam Cole, whatever the champion is. If that's what it's leading to, I understand that. And that's a great, that's an old school Ric Flair like storyline. That's old school. I didn't say that story. It's defending the belt makes no sense. <laughs> so my thing would be this. I mean, they did it with, with CM Punk and Ricky Starks. My thing is, so now do you count that as a title defense or do you not count it as a title defense? No, not a title. Not a real title. That's At this point, he literally has a replica. Pretty much. I understand that. Oh, wait, John, he has a replica with spray paint on it because we're bringing back the NWO bullshit from the... <laughs> Early 2000s. I do like but, the way but it's, it's got an X on style. it. Yeah. <laughs> Think about that, actually, honey. What's funny is that that's actually technically the original belt. Yes. But, because the member, MJF, has a new belt. He has a new belt. He has the a triple B. B. The so, triple B. Technically. So, all right, let's move on to other things. Um, apparently, a lot of people apparently missed that this match was a coffin match until Wednesday, even though they announced it like two weeks ago. But apparently, it was missed by a lot of people. Yeah, I how forgot. do you do a tag team coffin match? Uh, we'll find out on Sunday. Apparently, <laughs> yeah. okay. is it two in the same coffin or individual there, coffins? Like no, a double one in the same coffin. In the back before we're talking about the match, guys. It like, is Alan and and Sting versus the Moral Infancy, Stro Strickland and AR Fox in a coffin match. By the way, why Nick Wayne is not in this match, I have zero clue because they're fighting over the pride of Nick Wayne. And I would think he's okay because he wrestled on Wednesday. <laughs> because isn't isn't Nick Wayne's here. match on zero hour? No, there's no matches on zero hour except for the one that we're getting to a little while. <laughs> I, I think they just, and I don't mean this as an insult to Nick Wayne because I love him. I've watched him in GCW and everything. I think they maybe just thought, this is too big a stage for you at this point. We can't have you in the match. They should have maybe come up with an injury angle or something to take him out of it. Well, they did. And then he mm -hmm. they yeah, wrestled. but he was fine. As you said, yeah, he's fine. We just saw him wrestle. Hey. <laughs> I, is there a possibility that maybe Nick Wayne would get over way too over and be more popular than Darby? No, I don't think so. I think, actually, I like Darby. I like Darby. I like the like third generation thing we're doing here where Sting was the mentor for Darby, and now Darby's the mentor for Nick Wayne. Right. Yeah. I like that a lot. I actually like so that. Does that make Nick Wayne Darby's or er, Sting's grandson? Probably <laughs> <laughs> he's young after that. I'm he my own pain. grandpa. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um what if what if they have Nick Wayne do the run in for I something in this match? 100% be mm -hmm. Nick Wayne helping. There's, the, there's two things here that for me is obvious. Darby Allen never loses coffin matches, and Sting doesn't lose. So, <laughs> right. and you can, you can have the WWE. Mogul Embassy lose. The Mogul Embassy losing is fine, you know. Exactly, and nobody's getting pinned. So, like, <laughs> like I can see like Nick Way popping out of the coffin or something and helping him under like doing something like that. I can totally see that happening. That'd be great. Hey, honey. Just blame it on AR Fox. Okay. Honey. Also, so I, I can't get over this. How are they going to do this? Like, do both of them have to be in the same coffin? Do they get side by side coffins? Do the I coffins think it's a double line. Both, both, both of them are in the same coffin. Well, well you could do it like us. elimination. Like, you put them in a coffin, and then that person's removed, and then there's another coffin forever. Forever. <laughs> like, do we put them in a crypt? <laughs> Your crypt should explain any of this. Like, I hope they explain this going into Sunday. They don't explain any of this. All right. And then are they going to get like a padlock and roll them out someplace or what? <laughs> and also, are we going to take bets on whether or not Prince Nana goes in the coffin too? <gasps> That'd be amazing. No, Nick Wayne takes care of Prince Nana. There you go. <laughs> I love how I've just gotten into the fact that you guys just say Prince Nana like it's normal. <laughs> well, like they did before. Na 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 na. Hey hey, bye bye. <laughs> happened, honey. That happened. You made that one happen. So, well, what about that meme that John shared about um, unhinged uh, Paul McCartney going into his ninth <laughs> hour of singing the na 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 part of Hey Jude? <laughs> it's still going on to this day. <laughs> <laughs> More that or. Ryan Gosling singing Push. Oi. 
So sorry, I just I'm just over this whole like AI singing thing. Hey, We're I am Kenoff. Okay, you need him. You are Kenoff. You're definitely Kenoff. Yes, you are Kenoff. Okay. Anyway, you uh, and Prince Nana are Kenoff. So much like the last, <laughs> are we all just in agreement that Darby is singing winning this thing? Yeah, yeah yes, pretty much. Yes. There, it's it's going to be a double line. If you line. name the show, if you name the show, Prince Nana is Knuff. I'm writing that down right now. <laughs> I'm, writing that down. Uh, I'm with you though, but I mean, I, I have finally started caring about the Mogul Embassy. Finally, they're interesting to me, but they're not going to win. I'm just, uh, I, 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 I'm excited. <laughs> Sheesh. <laughs> and the baseball bat will come into play. Oh, yeah, yes. yeah. Right, let's move on to a match that people this match is pissing off people a lot. Not because of the match, but because Kenny Omega is not a singles match. And it's a golden uh, it is Kenny Omega, Hey Man and Hey Dan Kota Ibushi versus um versus um Kenosik Kesta and Bullet Club Gold, Rock Hard, Juice Robinson, and Jay White, and probably Jay White's some cutout figure that he's been carrying around on collision lately with with Don Callis. Oh boy, Sal, actually missing a collision. Jay White is literally right now walking around he was off for a week. And um and the guns brought out this like massive like those a massive like cardboard one of those cardboard things of him because he wasn't there that week and now it's yeah. just become part of the thing where he's like high fiving himself now it's it's becoming that <laughs> it's in the faction Card it's at, it's at ringside yeah. yeah so <laughs> picture you see this thing standing in the corner it's so fucking funny and, and okay. just remember, we get we got two words for you guns up. Yeah, yeah, so that next time Sal's not around, that you just open a Zoom window with him in it. <laughs> kind of like that. That is so tense. <laughs> but um, anyway, so this is the match. A lot of people are aggravated because Kenny Omega's not in a singles match on this show. I honestly don't care either way. Um, I think this match is going to be a lot of fun and energetic. Um, I can see people's point though, unless you're leading to Omega and Takeshita at all out. Maybe they're saving that match for there. Not completely possible. But um, the following week. Yeah, exactly. It's a problem. But yeah. um, I'm leaning towards Golden Elite. It's only because they did not win at, they, that they need to win another match. And it, it, they don't want Kenny Omega and Kota Bush losing here. I guess it's the only reason I'm leaning towards it. Jo John, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. I'm saying I think Golden Elite are going to gonna win this one, surely. But it could set up a, a thing with Takeshita. Um, I have really started liking uh, Juice. I saw someone online call him the 2023's version of Macho Man. And ever since then, that's how I'm kind of reading his promos. I'm like, yeah, that's a bit Macho Man. Yeah. I, that Rock Hard, Rock Hard Dude Robinson is a completely different. Is, he's doing his own show. Like, he's just there. Yeah. I don't even like my favorite part. Like, okay, this sort of out there. The, you, know, you know how the guns have their loss? I love the guns' entrance where, like, the camera spins around them and they go around in a circle. I love that. Really cool. And they had a match. It was the guns and um, Juice Robinson and Juice hamming it up. Yeah, <laughs> the entire night. Like I openly laughed. <laughs> it was so. <laughs> He's bringing back the spirit of cocaine to wrestling that we used to have. You know? <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. I'm. I'm just gonna put this out there that between Rock Hard Juice Robinson. And whatever Tony Storm is doing right now. Yes. They yes. have got to be the most interesting wrestling couple ever right now. Or oh, pair them pair them up on screen. Okay. Oh yeah, my god. Is, is Tony that Storm there needs to be a dare program? <laughs> is, is, is Tony Storm doing like some sort of boudoir photography thing where she's got that <laughs> robot on all the time or what? You know, I feel Come like on. she's doing like a Marilyn Monroe like Broken Hollywood starlet kind of a thing. We'll get into that more when we get to women's time, but I am literally loving her story. Her, her, her okay, this of like it all. We'll get to more to it in a few. Um, so uh, honey, why don't you go? Who's winning this match? Okay, so I do have one legitimate question Is it still considered the golden elite, even though the young bucks aren't part of it? Yes, because the golden lovers it's um Omega and Ibushi, and apparently, and, and Hangman's part of the elite, so there you go. I think it's, it's any pairing of the Golden Lovers and another elite member. Yeah, that's how it works. Is that kind of like Freebird rules or what? I know. Here, the elite. Okay, got it. Yeah, yeah, I'm just wondering because otherwise I would say it's like the Golden Lovers with the cowboy threesome kind of a thing going on. Like, <laughs> oh, threesome. Okay. No. <laughs> oh, we don't know. We don't know. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know what they do. Like, are, are, are you watching that show with Thunder Down Under or what? <laughs> I, was an old I, did, I honestly had no clue 
what was going to come out of your mouth after <laughs> you watched that show. I was terrified for what was going to come out of your mouth. <laughs> I've I've loved uh... at the same time I was prepared to say yes because chances are I've probably watched <laughs> No, I've loved terrifying the phobes whenever the golden lovers came up and they you'd get people in the comments on Facebook being like, Oh, that that name sounds weird. That sounds that sounds gay and I'll be like, Well look Oi! at this picture of the two of them then <laughs> Well welcome <laughs> Captain Avius. Billy and Chuck walked so that the golden lovers could run. There's gonna be more clips from this episode than I've had in it. Like, honestly. <laughs> anyway, back to the original question. I think, I think yes, the golden lovers are going to win and it's going to set up Omega Takeshita. Okay, fair enough. Sal, go ahead. <laughs> but that was a very interesting way of getting there. <laughs> um yeah, I mean, if you don't have Kenny Omega win in front of 300 million people, I, I think it's going to be bad. So I think the Golden Elite's going to win. Fair enough. Um, Dad, you're out, is out. Mm -hmm. I'd say the Golden Elite's going to win because if you don't, you're going to have 90,000 people at Wembley Stadium that's going to riot. But oh, so wait, do British people actually riot? Or is it kind of like them just going like, oh, excuse me, sorry. Yeah. Uh -huh. I, can, at you. I can answer your question. I can answer your question right there. Ever watch a soccer game where their team is losing? I guarantee you, watch the stands. I, it's I, a freaking riot. To, to answer your question, no, I've never watched a British soccer game. I've watched a British football game. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, I can let oh. him off. It's fine. But you know what? You're You're absolutely right. I mean... I the only time I have been it I wasn't part of it as such but I was in the vicinity of a bar fight was when Liverpool won and the fans still went crazy they 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 were the winners and there was still a fight <laughs> Oh that happens here all the time That's called that's called that's called a that's called a Saturday in Florida but I feel like <laughs> It's like wow. the equivalent of like a midwestern riot where we're just like oh sorry up <laughs> up up like yeah, we'll, we'll give you some cheese curds this yep. this featured a guy getting smashed in the face with a bottle <laughs> <laughs> you know what's funny about that is that run by cheesing first time i remember uh, we were, we, when mandy came out to new york for the first time and because there's a politeness out here and i'm in new york mode i haven't moved out here yet so i'm not i'm not like now i've been indoctrinated to like the um midwest I think at the time I was a New Jersey boy, and I'm used to just being rude. And, <laughs> it. and she's like apologizing him as we're walking around New York City. Yeah, I'm like, oh, excuse me, oh, excuse me. He's like, just walk, and he's like dragging me. No, <laughs> no, <laughs> no. They're I, used I, to it. I think but over here, just if, like if... the oh, excuse me in Jersey, people look at me like, where the fuck are you from? <laughs> <laughs> All no, right. I reckon there would be a riot if they lost. I mean, the, there's a lot of fans of uh, the elite and stuff here. I mean, obviously, there's fans of Bullet Club, but elite come from that. But I, I don't know. I think in this scenario, if Kenny Omega isn't winning. Ooh. Well, as that being said, let's segue to another match that may cause a riot if it doesn't happen. If the result doesn't happen the way I think it will, it is Chris Jericho presented with Fozzie's live entrance, by the way. That, that was announced by Jericho yesterday that he's going to do his own entrance. Great. <laughs> that is the most Chris Jericho thing I've ever heard. <laughs> so wait, 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 before you continue, is this going to be like when Booker T did his own commentary? Like he's literally going to be like wireless microphone walking to the ring? Okay, that was amazing. <laughs> this is going to be a stare time. Wait, this is the first time it's ever been done where the person singing the song is going to wrestle the match right afterwards. <laughs> so we'll see how this works. I was going to say, like, if Bad Bunny didn't even do that, who wait. the f does Chris Jericho think he is? That wrong. Fucking Which again would work if he was a heel, right? Like, oh, a heel, he's so obnoxious, he's going to do his own stuff. But he's like, now a face? Recently, speaking of which, recently on TikTok, I happened to see a video reminding me of when Flair, when Jericho was hosting Raw and Fozzie performed throughout the show. And then because he was such a heel, they had Flair like attack Fozzie and like destroy all the equipment. <laughs> that was, I forgot that happened. I completely forgot oh, about God. that. Like, <laughs> no, nobody that. likes musical performances 
at wrestling events, really. Like, the, the only time it's ever really worked was for, like, Motorhead doing Triple H and, and like, yeah. the, the DX band doing DX. It, other than that, when has it ever been fun for anyone? But here's the thing. The, the crowd wants to sing. The crowd doesn't want to hear Chris Jericho sing. <laughs> yeah. No thing. How is this thing along going to work? Like, how is that going to work? With a live performance, like I don't know. I how... really think that with Jericho's ego, he'll be like, "Shut up! I'm trying to sing." <laughs> I'm curious how that's gonna work with live performance. Actually, good point. I didn't think of that. <laughs> then again, if if there's anyone who can come up with a weird way of making it work, I think Chris might come up with something to twist it and not just be a performance. The live, he is used to doing live performances, so like he probably has a way of like saying, "What's up, the crowd sing? Let's have them do it." Like I could totally see that happening, like at a concert, like 100. percent but this entry is going to take forever to do that. <laughs> anyway, mm -hmm. yeah, he's facing off against Will Ospreay, who for some reason has Don Callis in his corner. Don't know why, but he does. Um, <laughs> this is that match I said. If, the, if they have this match, you know Will Ospreay is going to be the face by this crowd. There's no way that Jericho is going to get cheered mm -hmm. Will Ospreay's in the ring with him. So Will Ospreay is probably going to win this one because Jericho could lose the match at the end of the world. It's not it, is Will Ospreay part of the Don Callis family? Oh, I think Will Ospreay's just being, I think he's just, I think John Callis is cornering him because they wanted Will Ospreay on this show, so they threw him uh, in the storyline. I think okay. that's what happened here. Why <laughs> don't they just make the United Empire part of the Don Callis family? That, that, there's no problem there, that'd be fine. I, I don't see an issue with that personally, or why didn't you just have the United Empire come out and attack Jericho as a favor to Don Callis? And yeah. they don't even have to have mm. the Don be a part of it. I mean, that would have made more sense too. <laughs> like, so I, England uh, versus Canada. Yeah, okay, that works. So, <laughs> hey, Jericho, Dad, why don't you start us off? Go ahead. Uh, I one question I got is why are we having this match? Because number one, I mean, if, if if there's an issue between Jericho and Callus, don't you think we should have Jericho and Callus wrestle? No, you don't want Callus to wrestle. Yeah, I do. What? No, I see the man get his ass kicked, and he what? was a wrestler. He knows what he's doing. Yeah. <laughs> I want I want to see his Bruno Mortalis come off and you know get another Ooh. gash in his forehead. Have you have you noticed that gash in the forehead? Right, I love this. Whenever that he has those artworks made of himself, he highlights it even more to make yeah. himself look even tougher. <laughs> it's like it's like brighter than it is in real life. Yeah, <laughs> kind of like it would be like an S for Superman. Now he's got the gash for Callus. <laughs> um, I don't see Jericho coming on top if you want to basically draw out the storyline and, and have Callus throw some more people against Jericho. So, yeah, Will Osprey's going to win this one. All right. Um, Sal? Um, yeah, I, I feel like Will Osprey has to win. And, you know, what a, what a great boost for him it would be to win in front of a crowd like that, too. True. Very, very true. Um, how do you go? Um, Osprey, because I'm contractually obligated by my offspring to say that. Fair enough. Um, John? Your offspring looks Osprey. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I'm the same. I think Will Osprey. Uh, I, I think you'll be surprised how many people do cheer Jericho, though, just because of who he is. True. Um, I think it's going to be a bit of a split, kind of like everyone's cheering for both. Um, but I think Osprey will come out on top. He, he needs the win. Jericho can afford the loss, especially turning face. Makes you sympathize with him more. Don Callis is going to screw him over at some point, surely. So, yeah. Let's just Osprey. practice now. Let's go, Osprey Jericho. Let's go, Osprey Jericho. <laughs> Jericho. That's what you're going to get, 100%. I'm going to say a theory that I've heard, and that's going to make me even happier in a way. Um, so the theory I've been hearing is that Osprey is going to win because Sammy Guevara is going to join the Don Callis family. Oh. oh! Oh my God! If Sammy Guevara, well, wait, you if just Osprey ever touch our child will just combust. <laughs> I, just, I just, I just, for real. I just, when when Blake just said, I just an idea popped into my mind. <laughs> what if the whole Jericho Appreciation Society now become members of the Don Callis family? That would not be that far. No. Actually, it wouldn't be that far fetched. <laughs> I don't know if I would like that though. Too much, Jenny Garcia. It's too much. But but That's think about much. it. All the people that Jericho screwed over are now going against him. Yeah. <laughs> but no, I I, just, I had to throw that out there. The theory that I'm hearing. But um, 
I, I think Osprey's going to win too. All right, let's get to the um, championship matches. AEW Women's World Championship. It is um, South A for me, please. Ikaru Thank you. Versus Tony Storm, Soraya, and Dr. Britt Baker. Everybody now. D. D. M. D. Right. So back to what we were talking about before with Tony Storm. I'm loving this character right now. I was just off the belt. Her promos have been fantastic, and her promos on Collision have actually been even funnier because they've had more time for her to like be weirder. And the fact that she keeps throwing shoes at whoever needs back to you right now. At first, I, at first, I didn't get it. At first, I was like, what the hell is this? But the more she does it, the funnier it gets. <laughs> Lost it with that the first time. So yeah, to Tony Storm is losing her damn mind. I love it though. <laughs> so, I guess here's the thing in Afro Two is that Britt Baker has temporarily stepped away from her dentistry practice. I did hear that recently, actually, too. To focus oh. more on wrestling, because as she said, you never know when Tony's going to need me more, and basically he's putting that that he's going to need people more often than not. So she did that. So my thing would be, if you're going to make that type of move, wouldn't it be logical to then put the belt on Dr. Britt? That's a very good question. Um, honey, what do you think? Yeah, I didn't. <clears throat> what? Thinking that Britt wins because she gave up her dentistry. He's taking a break from being in tennis for a, for a little while. Mm. I don't necessarily think that that's going to like insinuate that she wins like how about we let she to have the belt for more than like a second first and really build something between her and Britt before we just throw the belt on Britt um and at the end of the day I think Britt doesn't need the title I think Sheeta needs the title I, I just thought of a theory I had an idea um so you have Sheeta win and then you have um the you have the outcast attack Sheeta and Britt Baker after the match, and that where Jamie Hayter comes out to make the save. Oh, mm -hmm. so again, she, see, she's injured, uh, but you can still use her. That, Ooh, you know, yes. theory from earlier that even though they're hurt, they can still be on the show because she really wanted to be on this card. <laughs> right. She's got, she's got to yeah. appear. You, you can't honestly, do it and have another. Give her a kendo stick. Exactly. Exactly. Or honestly, if, if fine, you don't want her to get physically involved. Have her hand Sheeta the kendo stick. Right there. Yes. There, there you right. go. There it is. Done. Absolutely perfect. And then her presence is big enough. Or or have or she can grab someone's ankles and yeah, yeah. she can do something without getting physically involved. She doesn't have to take a single bump, but the crowd is gonna be so so behind her that it's not gonna matter. Like it's exactly. not yeah. well, exactly. could, could but, can you hear the roar of the crowd if she comes running down the aisle? No. Busy. <laughs> Let's not have her run. Let's not have her take any <laughs> chances that will injure her long term. I'm literally saying, even have her like come out of the underneath the ring or from the crowd. Maybe from the crowd. Literally, oh, just there, you on. there you go. And there then just go. take off the hood. Like, don't. And the thing is, is they need to be very careful with her because with the adrenaline rush that she'll inevitably get from hearing the crowd, she's gonna think that she's able to do more than she can and i just worry that she'll hurt herself more if they don't tell her like this is what you need to do this is it like don't give her she'll, free reign she'll get carried away yeah so all right um so who did you pick it was just me and andy so and sal who's winning the match call me crazy 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 uh, crazy <laughs> <laughs> um Something tells me Soraya is going to win. Ooh. Oh. And then that leads to her and Tony Storm, and then inevitably Dr. Britt Baker, DMD, um, getting together and then maybe ending at, you know, okay. Okay, whatever pay-per-view. I'm Grand Slam coming up after that. Like, we have stuff happening. Like, there's a lot of shows right. coming. So... Um, I think finally, John, go ahead and make it official. I'm going with Sheeta. I think uh, Sheeta, she needs to have a at least a semi-decent title reign. Like, uh, 
you know, because last time she was the champion, there were no fans. So oh. I think this is sort of like, not an apology, because it's not their fault, but like, a, let, let's give you something nice for a little while. And I think Soraya went into me, it's too obvious. It's like, it would feel to the fans, like to me watching as, a, as an English person, I would be like, oh, you've just made a win because she's English. That's stupid. I would, get re <laughs> I would be annoyed. I'd be, because I love her, right? I love her, but she hasn't done enough in AEW to warrant that. I don't also, think. The other thing is, Soraya is not Paige. Soraya is. Page. I haven't, is this I, Paige you speak of? <laughs> but I haven't seen, like, I haven't seen a fire. I haven't seen anything to make me think that she even wants to be champion. She doesn't alone. have that that ruthless aggression. Is that it? Yes, it doesn't have the it factor. Yeah. I, I understand Mandy's saying she doesn't have the it factor that she had as Paige. Like Paige was, I feel like there's a whole different character. Like there is something different. I, I don't know what it is either. There's, the it factor isn't there. Well, maybe think... she just doesn't want to get too. You know, she, she's still trying to look after herself a little bit. So I, I like that she's involved and she's doing stuff and she always comes out with the fashion she's... and things like that. But but yeah, I... but and and that is fantastic. But should that be champion? No. No. Well, she can drop it the following week at All Out. <laughs> True. Yeah. Or, or wait, no, no, no. That's Mercedes Monet. She's not going to be on the show. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that we know of. <laughs> oh, it's true. Or uh, she kept that going because she got hurt. Like by accident, that whole thing kept going. <laughs> or, or Tony Storm wins the belt, but she can be like Christian Cage, where I'm going to defend my title. You know what? They didn't do that the first time, so they're not going to do it this time. But I honestly feel like anybody winning will propel Tony more and more into this crazy character. Into yeah, into this crazy character. Into like she's she's delusional. She's having a menti be like just let her have her her time with her her pretty curls and her red lipstick and you know just call it a day. She's delulu. It's okay. By the way, there's one thing I will say that Tony Storm, by the way, is on New Japan television has been helping juice. In U.S. shows, like in U.S. shows, she comes out and helps Juice. So who is she helping? Rock hard, Juice Robinson. So yeah. all right, let's move on. Next match: um, AEW World Tag Team Championship match. It is FTR, hopefully, against the Young Bucks. <laughs> uh, here's the problem. Here's the problem. Um, I actually figured FTR would retain this match, you know, until Mister Dumbass there got himself arrested. So now. Yeah. Um, I I think they're gonna put the belt on the box just because. Um, yeah. no other reason than because there's no reason. But then then he can go and deal with his issues. Um, Sal, I see you shaking your head. Go ahead. Yeah, I agree. Um, all day I would have said FTR. Then that happened, and uh, guns are not allowed in this match. So <laughs> I think the young bucks are gonna win. Um, honey, go. Honestly, I thought the bucks were gonna win it all along. So nothing really changes for me. Enough. Enough. I'm kind of I'm kind of feeling that FTR is kind of flat. Like it's just the same shtick over and over again. They're not. I think somebody I, I don't know who I, you like alluded to this that they would have been great in like the 80s. Like yes. they're very vintage. Like. Their music, their clothing, like their just everything about them is very vintage, and I think now dad ass. It just it kind of falls flat. What's interesting is that we were talking about that, and the, the FTR Bullet Club Gold match was phenomenal. Like that match they did on Collision. That 50 do they put on great matches? Yes. Phenomenal. Like <laughs> it just. Uh, I'm I'm really torn about FTR. Like I want to like them, but I just stop fucking giving Dax the microphone. Seriously. <laughs> Jeff, um, guys, out. Dom, Dad, go ahead. You're, you're next. We um, get it. You love your tequila, your wife, and your kid. Who doesn't? Do you have to have it in that order, though? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, tequila always comes first, surely. Exactly. Well, isn't, isn't your wife's name tequila? No. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. Next. All right. Um, my heart goes out and I want FTR to win but no I think the Young Bucks are old will take the titles only because that'll free up the situation that I don't think Tony wants to get into which is having FTR 
give them back the belts. By the way, I'm going to throw out something else. You know there's going to be a press conference after this show, a press conference. Do you really want FTR on there if they're champions? <laughs> really? Wait, do you have to have everybody well, on the press scrum, or can you be choosy like WWE? Really dumb. AEW has been doing a thing where they bring out the champions after that night on the press scrums. I would not trust them to put FTR out there. I would not on any level. <laughs> I think if that would be the case, Tony would have to lay a ground rule like, okay. I mean, what do you do with Punk? Why would you do with FTR? <laughs> what do you do with FTR? Well, I mean, you you would you would say, okay, I don't want any questions regarding FTR because it's a situation. The that, problem, you know, the problem with that is you have real media there, and they're going to want to talk about it. That's the problem with that logic. And it's not like WWE. But, it's not like WWE where they actually take the time, like Mandy just said, where they actually take the time and their press conferences are interrupted because you know they're always throwing certain people, and you know they vetted questions before we went on the air. You know they did. And the questions are always good anyway, but they vetted questions. AEW didn't vet questions. They don't do that. Again, that's because Tony Khan doesn't, like, he just sees everything as, like, a, a huge game. And, like, everything is just fun and great. That's, and That's until because. He gets hit with, until he gets hit with a fight in backstage while he's doing his thing. Like, he has no control over it. It's, he's, like, a first-time principal who can't control his high school. That's because Tony Khan is too much of a fanboy and not the boss. Not and wrong. he needs to put the boss's hat on and say, guys, this is the way how it's going to go. You don't like it? Then when your contract is over, take a hike. Um, John, to you, you didn't get a prediction if you were gone for a minute there. So FTR, Bucks, who wins this thing? Is it obvious? I mean, I even before the things happened, I, I wanted the Bucks to win. I'm a big fan of them. Um, and I'm a I'm a thousand percent with Mandy there. Like FTR, I I always feel like I'm alone in this. I I find them a bit boring. Like the matches are fine. I I have a good time with the matches, but there's no there's no character. There's no story to anything they're doing. Um, See, that's what I was trying to say. You just said it better than I did. No, yeah. you said it best. Yeah, I'm stealing from you. Um, <laughs> So, yeah. so I wanted the books to win anyway, and with what's happened, I think I'm assuming they're probably going to win. So I, I'm I'm going with the with the books. I would say, and FTR, you know, they've had the belts for a little while, and there's not really been much in the way of sort of storyline with it. Is there? It's like, eh, well, okay, they've had a they've had a good few defenses, I guess. I will throw out there. I'm still to this day, and I brought this up on the show many, many times. Angry at FTR. <laughs> When they were the revival, and they had that house show match, Ugh. it was Lucha House Party <laughs> revival, and that was the longest house show match and the most boring house show match I've ever seen in my damn life. <laughs> <laughs> I have never been more bored, and you have our kid yelling to hit the shatter machine to get this match over with. Like oh. forty minutes at a house show, it was one of the most bizarre things I've ever seen in my life. So like, that's the thing; it's all well and good doing like retro, old fashioned style wrestling. There, but some things have changed for the better. We don't yeah. need we don't need forty minute house show matches of just I don't know chin locks. <laughs> yeah. Basically, take all, take downs. He went before WrestleMania. I don't think four matches combined went forty minutes total. Like, <laughs> I mean, honestly, <laughs> but I, I sound like I'm being mean though. I do like them. I do. I just want to like them more. I no. think it was Tony Schiavone that made the comparison that FTR is similar to Jim Cornette and the Midnight Express. Yes. And, and how they their tag team wrestling is specialist and taken out, and they kind of know each other very well. Okay, that's great. But with the Bucks, you get that plus a little extra. You mm -hmm. get the high-flying moves. You get the acrobatics. You get the showmanship, you get the charisma. But no promos. <laughs> well, you know what I love about the books? Like, I know you get some critics going, oh, all the matches are the same. No, they're not. I disagree they're completely. Not. You're I always guaranteed to see at least one thing in their matches that you're like, what the hell was that? I will throw one more thing and then we'll move on because we have two more matches we have to get to. But I will throw out one more thing that if you put the tag belt on um, Dynamite, there's actually tag teams over there that they will have tag teams if you don't roll a collision to like two teams. So it makes more sense yep. on Dynamite because like all the tag teams <laughs> don't get along with Pog because they're over on Dynamite. Um, <laughs> there you go. 
Oh, all right. Let's move on. We um, I said earlier we were going to skip the um, the the match for the pre-show, and because that ties into our main event, which is so stupid, but we're doing it anyway. It is the Ring of Honor World Tag Team Championships. It is Aussie Open against F um against um MJF and Adam Cole, baby. Why are they on the ta- Why are they on the pre-show? <laughs> no idea. Well, that's what we're doing. Why couldn't they? So, so, there's even a point made that WWE does lately has been a great idea where they do SmackDown in the city or country, whatever it is, of where they're doing the paper, the PLA, the next day. And then they'll do matches like this on Friday so that on Saturday, you don't have to worry about them, especially if you have a match like this where you have your main event in a match. You do this on Collision, and then on Sunday, <laughs> you do like an, you, do, you do the main event. Like, it makes no sense to do this on the pre-show. Yeah, John, I see you want to talk. <laughs> well, I'm, I agree. It's it's strange, right? And it being on the pre-show is extra strange because my first thought was it's going to be something's going to happen in the match, a turn or something to set up the title match later on. So I think Aussie Open are going to win because MJF and Adam Cole, something's going to happen with them. But then that's also weird that you'd put that on the pre-show and not the opening match. So I don't, I'm not 100% confident in what I'm thinking, to be honest. Because again, like I assume Adam Cole will turn heel on him or something. Something like that. MJF turning heel is too obvious for everyone, right? I, 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 my brain went to like Adam Cole turns on MJF and joins the kingdom. But I don't want that to happen either. Like I don't want Cole to turn heel. So like it's, it's a really strange situation we're in here. I think he's going to turn heel, though, because it seems like MJF is legitimately turning face. That's true. I have no problem with it. Okay, Dad, go. Here's something to kind of think about is that MJF doesn't turn heel. Roddy Strong gets involved, costs Adam Cole the title, Mm -hmm. and then you got a quandary with MJF. Should I cover and pin him or not? Yeah, no, no, no question. Are we talking about the tag match? Or are we talking about the main event? What are we talking about here? I'm talking about the main event. Okay, because I was just because I'm still trying to figure out how we get out of this tag match. Like, how do we get out of this? Because you don't. I don't think basically what it is is it, with the tag match. One of the participants, I'm talking probably more Adam Cole, is going to feign an injury, and Aussie Open wins. I, it's oh a, yeah. How do you get out of this match? Like, how do you get out of this? That's I, it. You feign an injury. You basically it, say, "Okay, I tweaked my knee, and I can't, I, I can't do it. I can't, you know." Full move though. That's the problem. That's an MJF thing. We got the MJF thing to do. That's, and there you go. You won't expect it from Adam Cole. Dan, so, I, I think you're on to something with that. I think you're right because it it then it then sets up later on where it turns out, oh, he's actually fine. You know. So, honey, what do you, how do you get out of all of the open MJF Adam Cole? Honey. I honestly, there's so many different ways that this could go. But honestly, I think they might win. Really? Okay. That's intriguing on its own. Like on its own, that's intriguing. I feel like they might win and then kind of have their differences during the match. Like, I feel like, didn't WWE do something similar where you had two people that ended up hating each other becoming champions? Done that a lot, actually. I, I, off the top of my head, I can think of like uh, um, Edge and Chris Benoit. I can think of um, Shawn Michaels and John Cena. I can think of like teams like uh, also also Cena throwing, and Daniel Bryan. <clears throat> well, they didn't hate each other. That's the thing. But, like I'll throw out there another idea, honey. Back to what you thing. They did do WWE did do a WrestleMania match where it was the WWE Tag Team Champions Rey Mysterio and Eddie Guerrero in a match on WrestleMania as champions, and they got along. Right. But like they've done that too. So we've seen everything when it comes to this variation. So go ahead, I throw your hand up. <laughs> uh I I'm reminded of the wonderful WCW storyline when Sting and the Giant were champions and the Giant joined NWO. And then they had a match to see who was going to be the tag team champions and then pick their new partner. Very TNA. It's very, very TNA. <laughs> <laughs> Did you remember in TNA? Did I remember in TNA? So Mo and Joe and Kurt Angle had a match for all the belts. Yeah, and then Kurt Angle had to find his own tag partner. Like it was so stupid. <laughs> so dumb. I loved it. 
The other thing I liked about it, that Cornelio was forced to defend all the belts in one night. Like, <laughs> hey, defend- you know what? I don't care if it's controversial. TNA Kurt Angle, possibly the best Kurt Angle. So, all right. Um, I, I uh, see my see, now. Mandy said it. Putting the belt on them won't be the worst thing. Because no one watching Ring of Honor anyway, so it may actually help the show. <laughs> um, or as Will Pruitt says on his audio shows, audio reviews for Collision, Ring of Honor exists. Really? It does? Where? Where does it exist? <laughs> but anyway, oh. um, I'm going to go with Adam Cole and MJF do win here. This is what Mandy said. I actually like that idea a lot now that she said it. Um, let's go to the main event then. It would be MJF defending against Adam Cole for the AEW World Heavyweight Championship. Um, common sense for me says Adam Cole wins because he almost beat him the first time. But I have a feeling we're saying of MJF versus CM Punk at all out, so I don't see that happening either. Even though MJF's not even bringing up the fact that CM Punk has a, a championship belt <laughs> at all. <laughs> um, I'm I'm, you know, I'm still going to go with my original guy, the Adam Cole wins the world championship here, and I have a weird feeling if they're going to do it, this is where you turn Cole heel and have the Kingdom help him. This is where you do it. Ah, that's how you do it right here. But um. That's for my original. I'm gonna go with my original gut before this whole everything cr- 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 crazy. Um, Sal, go ahead, you. Okay, so call me crazy. <laughs> crazy, um, crazy. So I had this crazy idea in my head that during the pre-show, Roderick Strong's gonna come out, attack Adam Cole, make them lose the make them lose the match. Okay. Then for the main event. Adam Cole's a little hurt, blah, blah, blah. We do that whole thing that you guys are talking about. Kyle O'Reilly comes back. Oh. Oh. Attacks Adam, attacks Adam Cole, makes him lose that title, too. And now we have a little Ooh, you know, that's, triangle thing going on. That's intriguing. Like, I, I, I think the King of the Union involved somewhere and have Kyle O'Reilly come back. That'd be intriguing. That'd be very... I, I miss Kyle O'Reilly. I miss him. So I, oh, I, like, I like that idea. Dad, go ahead. Officially. And, yeah. Um... You know, officially, at first I was going to go MGF retains, but after hearing all the wonderful ideas that the, the group has thrown out, there is a good possibility that uh, Adam Cole could win. And then he and his bestie MGF still have that friendship. But then all of a sudden, all the other people that Adam Cole has quote unquote screwed over in the past are going to attack them. You know, Roddy Strong, Kyle O'Reilly, the rest of the kingdom. So I see like, and I, I hate to say it, I'm not gonna say it, but I'll I'll say it. It's like <laughs> EW's version of the judgment day. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know about like uh, how do you what do you think officially main event? What happens? <laughs> I would like Adam Cole to win. I think MJF is going to win, and I think he's going to finish his own story with CM. Oh, don't go there! No, 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 no! We don't know. <laughs> there, no, no. I see what you did there. Um, John, go ahead. Officially, main event. I am going to go kind of in between everything that's been said. I'm going to say MJF retains because of um, because of Roddy and Kyle coming back, attacking Adam. They're annoyed at him. They're, they think he's turned their backs on them. Where was he for them? You know, kind of, And maybe they both join the kingdom, and it makes the kingdom a bigger a bigger thing within AW and ROH. That's a good point. That's a good idea. All right, well, that is all in 